Okay, so let's start. So we are discussing various examples of topologies. Last was product topology of two spaces. Another one, subspace topology. <clears throat> so the notation, we have all this uh, X, a topological space, so a set with a topology, topological space. And we have a subset, which is called Y. Y, subset of X. Okay, we have a subset of a topological space. We want to define a topology on, on Y. So... T, Y, the topology on Y. This, these are all intersections. Y intersec intersection with U, such that U is open in X. Okay, U open in X. U in T. So this is the topology of X. So this is a topology. On Y, and this is a subspace topology. So this is a definition. Well, one has to prove that it's a topology. This is very easy because what are the three conditions? The empty set is of course the intersection of the empty set. The whole set Y is the in, uh, intersection with the whole space, X. And then we have uh, arbitrary unions. Well, for arbitrary unions, uh, <coughs> what we have? Arbitrary unions, no? Union, alpha and J, of open sets. Uh, so the open sets are Y intersection, intersection U alpha, no? Y intersection U alpha. Where these, so these are the open sets. These are open in, in the whole space, no? These are typical open sets. And of course, this is uh, uh, set theory again. So it's uh, <coughs> uh, Y intersection union U alpha, alpha and J. And so this is also open in X. This open in X. Okay, this is for the union, and uh, the same for the intersection Y from one to n finite intersections. No, Y intersection of <coughs> U I. I change index. No, this is a finite. Finitely many, U1, UN, okay? Here, I don't know, U alpha, so I cannot. So this, of course, is equal. So these are again open in UI, so this is again uh, uh, Y intersection, intersection UI, I from 1 to N. And again, this is open in X, finite intersection of open sets. So this is more or less a proof, okay? Which is easy set theory, always. So this is a topology on Y, and this is a subspace topology. That's the definition. Okay, so <clears throat> as for the product topology, if you have a basis, so there's a little lemma observation more, lemma. <clears throat> if B is the basis for X, for the topology of X, then I should use the not notion <clears throat> then BY So what we take is, we take 
not all intersections, but only with the basis. So why intersection B, B in B, is the basis for Y, for the subspace topology. It's the basis for Y. So how do we prove that something is a basis? I will not write the proof, but I make a picture, no? Uh, <clears throat> so proof. But this is proof by, by picture. How, we, we apply some lemma, it's a basis. Uh, for each open set, <clears throat> for each open set, each point in this open set, you should be able to find a basis element which contains the point and it's contained in the open set. Then the lemma says this is a basis, okay, and generates a topology which we have. That's the lemma, okay, which we always use in this situation. So what we have, we have well, x and we have a subspace y, a subset y, and we have an open set. Okay, and the point. So what are the open sets in Y? The intersections. So this is an open set in Y. This is a U, okay? U so this is U intersection Y. U is open in X, no? And we have a point. We take a point, okay? Then we should be able to find, so this, <laughs> It's x, small x, okay? So we should be able to find the basis element which contains the point and it's contained in this open set, no? And then we apply the lemma. However, this point, of course, is in u also, okay? And we have a basis for this topology of x. So we find the basis element which contains x is contained in u, a basis element in the basis uh, b, okay? So this is uh, uh, B in B, this basis element, no? And then it's clear that we intersect B with uh, Y, okay? And then, of course, X is contained. <coughs> so we get here this uh, uh, part here, no? In B intersection... Uh, Uh, B intersection Y, oops, B intersection Y, and this is contained in U intersection Y. So this is a proof, okay, trivial proof, okay. You make a picture and you, you look at the picture and then you write down what you see. Okay. So now, I give one example here of subspace. And this is a little bit strange, but it's important. It will be important example in the book. So here's an exercise, or example, better example. So I is the interval, 0, 1 in R. So this is a real interval, OK? I. That's why we don't call an index set i, because in general i is this interval. That's the notion of the book. And then we take i cross i. Of course, i cross i, we can take the, we have here the subspace topology, okay? This is a standard topology, and we have a standard topology on the interval. Then we have the standard topology here, which is a product topology. That's not very interesting, OK? So what we take now, so this is contained in R cross R. That's clear. And we have the standard topology, if we want. But that's not what I want now. What I want is, uh, so uh, this is ordered, OK? So we have the, what did we say, uh, dictionary order. On I cross I, dictionary order. Uh, 
You take the dictionary order on I cross I, okay? And with this topology, this is called the ordered square in the book, okay? Then we get the ordered square. That's the definition of the ordered square. And it's written in the book, I square ordered. That's an O, okay? The ordered square. So this is a notation. This is one of the main examples of the book, which we will see again and again. <laughs> I will discuss in one moment. So we take here the dictionary order on I cross I, okay? First uh, coordinate, second coordinate. And then uh, we take this topology, uh, the order topology, and uh, 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 this gives the ordered square, the order topology, okay? Dictionary, we take, of course, the order topology here, and then we get the ordered square, okay? That's an important example. And that's a notation. Of course, you can do something else here, OK? You can take here the order topology, OK? We can take here the order topology of, of the dictionary order, OK? That's the only we see, of the dictionary order. We can take here the order topology. And then we can take the subspace topology, OK? Then take the subspace topology. Then take the subspace topology, as we defined, on I cross I. So we have the subspace topology of this ordered, and we have directly the order topology, OK? And the observation is they are not equal. One is an interesting example. The other is not so interesting, OK? So what happens is that's an exercise, one of the exercises in the book. But it's important, so I do. So uh, observation, they, you, you would maybe guess they are equal, OK? They are not equal. So the, uh, the exercise is, uh, the uh, subspace topology is strictly finer than the dictionary, okay? The subspace topology, in this sense, on I cross I, is strictly finer. They are not equal, these two topologies, but they are comparable. It's strictly finer than the, uh, then the order topology of the ordered square, okay? Then the order topology. So this is the situation. <coughs> so we make, uh, uh, how to see this, okay? So we have the ordered square, we make pictures. We have the ordered square, I cross I. That's I cross I, okay, the square. And then uh, we have to prove we have to prove two things. Finer, no? The subspace topology is finer than the order topology, okay? So we're taking open sets in the subspace topology. But well, we can work with the basis, okay? The basis for the subspace topology, first we have a basis here, which are intervals, okay? These strange intervals. There are two types of intervals, but we need only one type of interval, okay? So intervals, and we intersect. So what are intervals? Intervals are, for example, these types of intervals, no? This, this, and we have this type of interval, okay? In R2. In R cross R. And then we intersect, and what do we get? We get we get this one, okay? So this is open. That's a closed interval, the intersection, okay? That's a closed one. But this is open in 
in which in the subspace, in the subspace topology. This is open. That's a closed interval which we get, okay? I, I started with the wrong, okay? <laughs> I should, if you have proof finer, I should start with the other topology, with the smaller topology, okay? But this is open in the subspace topology, but I can continue here. But, so they're not equal to topology, but not open, but not open. In the, uh, what is the other one? Order topology. Okay. This is open in the subspace. That's clear, no? This closed interval, you get this intersection with this larger open interval in R2, okay? So it's open. By definition of subspace topology. That's an example of subspace topology, okay? But I say it's not open in the uh, other topology, in the order topology. Why not? Well, of course, in these points, we have no problems, okay? If we take such a point and we take an open set in the order topology, the pr problem is this point and this point. These two points are a problem, no? Because if this would be open also in the order topology, then given this point, we should be able to find the basis element of the order topology which contains this point and is contained in this interval, right? That's always the same condition, no? So an uh, interval, again an interval, we are in the order topology, but on this small, we don't see R2 now. We have only this space, the order topology, okay? These two points are not there now, okay? So I need an interval which contains this, right? Well, I have no problem with the lower bound, obviously, no? As a lower bound, I take anything here, right? That's clear. But I have a problem with an upper bound. This point I cannot take. That's not an element of I cross I, right? I need an upper bound. So what I have to do, I have to go to the right. So I, with the upper bound, I have to go to the right. And what does it mean? I have to take some point here. I don't know which one. But I have to go to the right, okay? But then I get the interval between this point and uh, this point, okay, as an upper bound, I get everything, all these intervals here and up to this point, okay? The interval between this and this contains all these lines in between. So no basis element contains this point and is contained uh, in, in, in this part here, okay? So they're not equal to topology. So this, that's what I write. This is open, so again, this was the example. This is open in the subspace topology, that's trivial, but not open in the order topology. So they're not equal, these two topologies. I should have started with the other one, okay? <laughs> so now I show, uh, this was not final, this was, uh, Strictly finer if you prove finer, okay? Right. So now I prove finer, okay, again. But this is... This is clear. So now uh, uh, I have to start with an element of what? Of... Uh, no, I lost... Uh, uh, I have to... With the uh, topology, which is coarse, okay? That's the order topology. So I take an open set of the order topology. How does it look like? Well, I take two points here, and I take such an open interval, for example. No? And it's clear that this is also open. That's the basis element, OK, for the ordered square. It's this is open also uh, 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 in R2, OK? This is also an interval in R2. Or I have uh, uh, the same, of course, if I take a point here and maybe a point here, no? then it's this one. No problem. Open in R2. Okay? So this is no problem. 
so then I can take points with different coordinates intervals, okay? So this goes up. Then you have all this stuff here, and this is the interval. Right? And it's clear this is open. Given any point here now. For example, this point, we should be able to find a basis element of the subspace topology, which contains this point, and is contained here. Well, if this takes this point, it's no problem again, okay? This is clear. Here we can take again this. But also for the other points, you may think uh, the only points, maybe like, look at this point, okay? This is here, and now, uh, we, but, but this interval here is intersection of something like this, okay, in R2. So the intersection of this with this is this, okay? So this is also okay. We find the basis element. So the difference is the basis elements, maybe you find this uh, uh, easy, the basis elements for the elements for for the subspace topology. So what are they? <coughs> they are open intervals like this. There are also these intervals, okay, which is intersection with the larger interval here. And of course, we have also, uh, uh, for example, these. Okay, and these are sufficient. <coughs> because these are, we take intersections in R2, of intervals in R2 with this, and we get this kind of stuff. And for the uh, order topology, it's different, no? The basis. This is not this. So we get again, of course, these intervals, no? No problem. But we don't have this kind of stuff, okay? What we have is this, then, if we don't want to stay on one line, then we have to go and we get ex immediately such a kind of construction, okay? Because the upper point of the interval well, we have to go to the right, okay? If we want this point here, no? We have to go to the right. Cannot go up. Because we are not in R2. We are in I cross I, okay? So these are two topologies in I cross I. By the way, this topology is not interesting. Why not? What, which is this topology for the subspace topology? What is this topology? I mean, you see all these. Of course, you have also these, no? These are open also, no? So what is this topology? You can give, uh, describe in a different way. It has discrete times standard. So this is uh, subspace topology. So this is equal, okay, to uh, I discrete topology times I standard. Okay, that's exactly this topology. I discrete with a discrete topology. So this is with a discrete topology. And this is, if you don't say anything, it's standard topology, standard. And this, you get this topology. Well, you get basis. A basis of the product is basis times by basis element, okay? Here you have points, okay? And then times basis elements of I. What are basis elements of, of I? We need also these intervals. Now, because it's bounded, we need open intervals, 
half open intervals if you have the largest or smallest element. No, and that we have here. Okay, we have the largest or smallest element. So this is standard. Uh, this is just this product, okay? And it's not so interesting. What is interesting is this one. This one is interesting, okay? This is many open sets, okay? Too many to be interesting, okay? It's just discrete times standard and many open sets. So you can forget more or less this. It's just an exercise. But this one, you will see, okay? And this is uh, I square, ordered square. Okay, that's the notion. That's the ordered square, ordered square. And the basis looks like this. And this is, has m much more open sets than this. And this we will see. Okay, so this is an example for subspace topology, order topology, an exercise. Okay? So you should under, uh, this comes back. You should uh, remember this. Okay, this was an exercise. <clears throat> the exercises are very often more interesting than the proofs and the I will give tomorrow some exercises for home work tomorrow, okay? So this is a subspace topology and some example. And now we have closed sets and limit points. This is very formal again. So closed sets and limit points. This is like a real analysis, limit points. Maybe not limit point is not so clear. So what is a closed set? So X is a topological space. So the closed sets are complements of open sets, okay? Uh, so A in X is closed if, that's the definition. X minus A, the complement, that's the complement, is open. <coughs> then, well, we, it's equivalent in some sense. We may all work, uh, work with open sets or with closed sets. No? The, the axioms for, for closed set is empty set and X are closed. This is the complement of X. This is the complement of the empty set. Then uh, arbitrary unions of open sets are open. Uh, 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 f uh, finite intersections of... Finite unions, sorry, finite unions. It's just the opposite, no? Finite unions, that's the Morgan of closed sets are closed. And arbitrary intersections. Of open sets of closed sets are closed. So uh, this is De Morgan, okay, again. I mean, this first is trivial. Uh, this is trivial. Finite unions of closed sets. So union, finite union of closed sets. Uh, so what are closed sets? Closed sets are complements of open sets. So it's x minus u, uh, no, u i, i from 1 to n, no? So this is a closed set here, this. I mean, this is open, and this is closed. So a finite union of closed, and then we have the Morgan, what does it say? Intersection. This intersection of uh, x minus intersection of ui. Is that okay? That is what it is, okay? And this is open. But we need to find that intersection here. Otherwise, we have a problem, okay? And the same, of course, for, for the other uh, De Morgan. So we have uh, arbitrary unions. Uh, X minus u alpha, alpha in J, you know, we have an arbitrary intersection, arbitrary intersection. So this is again uh, uh, x minus uh, 
union u alpha, alpha and j. And here we have no problem because arbitrary unions are open. So this is open. And that's the Morgan, two times, OK? So this is, these are the axioms for closed sets. So we have, we prove two lemma, lemmas, which are uh, uh, almost trivial, but used often, so. So the first lemma is, So you, uh, if why we have subspaces, no? We define subs top, subspace, subspace topology. So uh, why in X a subspace, let Y in X be a subspace? This means that X is a topological space, Y is a subset with a subspace topology, okay? So this is a short way to write that. And then, uh, Then a subset A in A in Y is closed So what you suspect is open sets are intersections with open sets from the big space now and closed sets the same. So if and only if then I is closed if and only if A is intersection. C, C closed in, in X, yes. So the open sets in the subspace are intersections with open sets in the large space, and the closed sets are intersections with uh, uh, open sets. Okay. So maybe the, the proof is very easy, but so I'm right. So proof. Well, you take complements. Now, I I might. Uh, right, take complements. Okay. So let's write the proof. Okay. So uh, we have two directions anyway, so we have to be careful. So suppose A is this one. Suppose A is uh, Y intersection C, where C is closed in X. So we have, what have we proved? We have to prove that A is closed in. Y minus A is yeah, A is closed in Y. So Y minus A is open in Y. That's what we have to prove. Okay. Uh, so this is closed in X. What does it mean? That means X minus C is open in X. No. That's the definition. Complement. And this implies that x minus c intersection y is open in y, yes. That's the definition, no? This is open intersection y. These are exactly the open sets in the subspace. Intersection with open sets in the large space. Okay. However, what is this? <coughs> this is y minus c intersection y. This, if you look at this now, you have y intersection. You you have to uh, throw away c. Okay, so y minus c, c intersection y, okay, because we are in y. So that's clear that this is the same. And this is uh, y minus a.
Okay, so this y minus a. And this might, means, of course, that uh, uh, y minus a is open in y, so the complement is closed in y. No? So this implies that a is closed in y, since its complement is open. Okay, so this is one direction, okay? That's one direction, and conversely, maybe we do this, so... Conversely, one has to concentrate here, no? What to write? Conversely, it's very... Depends on logic. So which direction did we prove? We prove this direction. Now suppose A is closed in Y, okay? So conversely, suppose uh, A is closed in Y. And we have to prove that uh, it is the intersection of a closed set in the whole space with Y. No, that's what we have to prove for the other direction. Uh, so A is closed in Y. This means Y minus A is open in Y. And that means that the open sets we know, so this means Y minus A is equal to <coughs> U intersection Y, where U is open in X. The open sets are intersections. So what have you proved? No, no, I don't see any. So this means, uh, uh, what is u? u is open in x, no? So x minus u is closed in x. I have to write now, closed where, no? Closed in y, closed in x, otherwise we have problems, no? And y, intersection x minus u, no? is equal to Y intersection, no, sorry, Y minus Y intersection U, no? This is what we have to throw away. Y intersection, avoid U, okay? So Y minus Y intersection U. So what? So I want this is A, no? Of course. <laughs> this should be A. That's clear. So this is uh, Y minus, maybe I'm exaggerating, intersection A. So this is A. I'm saying that's what I want. This is A. Uh, what is U? U intersection Y is... Sorry, I wrote something wrong, no? Minus A. Uh, uh, U intersection Y, no? It's Y minus A, so it's okay. It's two times the complement. Okay, so here one has to concentrate, okay, on, on taking complements open where, no? So when, it's not so pleasant to write, okay? You have to concentrate a lot on, on these kinds of proofs, okay? The same is true for the next uh, lemma, which is also. So this finishes the proof, no? So the next lemma, but they are used often, so in particular, in particular the next one. So maybe I prove that also. So what is the next lemma? The next lemma says, lemma, 
I call everything lemma here. In the book is proposition, sometimes, or whatever, I don't know. So why subspace of x? Well, I mean, right, subspace of x, again, as before. So, sorry, I have to define the closure before. So definition. Before I can write this demo. So the closure. What is the closure? So I is a subset of X. X is a topological space. So this is a subset. And X is always a topological space now. So we have the interior, which is interior, interior of A. Also written in this way. This is a union. Of all open sets which are contained in A. So U open in X u contained in A. So arbitrary union of open sets is open. So this is open, OK? Uh, open in X. This is open in X, clearly. Arbitrary union of open sets. No, it's open in X. In fact, it's the largest open set, obviously. It's the largest open set contained in A. Yeah, the largest open set. contained in uh, A. That's what it is. That's the interior. I didn't write. The interior of A. And you write interior of A or A interior. OK. More interesting is the closure. So then we write sometimes closure of A, more often this notation, the closure of A. So this is, so this will be defined, uh, will be the closure. Of A. <coughs> so what is this? So now we take the intersection. We take dual to this intersection of all closed sets, so C closed in X, such that uh, A is contained in C now. Okay. So arbitrary intersection of closed sets is closed, so this is closed, okay? So closure of A is closed. It is closed in X, certainly. Oops. It is closed in X. And in fact, it is the, uh, what is it? The smallest closed set containing A. Yeah, exactly. The smallest. Because we take the intersection over all closed sets which contain A, no? The smallest closed set containing A. That's what it is, okay? The largest open which is contained, the smallest open which contains. And if you change roles here, it makes no, it, it's in general not, not well defined, okay? Because uh, uh, arbitrary intersection of closed sets, uh, of open sets, will not be open. And uh, arbitrary uh, union of closed sets will not be closed in general, okay? So you can define these two. 
but you cannot change. What, what is not well defined in general is, uh, so he says the largest open set contained in A, the largest closed set contained in A is not well defined in general, okay? The largest closed set contained in A, you cannot define, okay? Because you, uh, 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 and what is not def also in general not defined is uh, uh, the smallest open set containing A. That's also not well defined, okay? Well, you can try to write, but uh, then you get, have to take uh, 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 arbitrary union of uh, uh, closed sets and arbitrary intersection of open sets. So that's in general not open and not closed, okay? It's defined, but it's not open and not closed. So it's not, okay. So now comes the lemma, which I wanted to, uh, to write immediately, forgetting to define. So this is the definition, and now this lemma. Which I start again. So what does it say? So why is the subspace of X again? Why is subspace of X? So that means X is a topological space. Why is a subset? And we have the subspace topology, okay, which we defined. A subset of Y, and A is a subset of X, uh, of Y, sorry, A is a subset of Y. Subspace, but we are a subset now, okay? A is a subset of Y. Then the closure. of A in Y is, so what, uh, you take the closure in the whole space and uh, intersect with Y. So it's A, by A closure intersection Y. Where this is a closure of Y in X. So this symbol is always, uh, uh, in reference to the large space, okay? Not where, so why, why is closure of A, is closure of A in the large space, okay? Always in, y, in X. Okay, so well, let me prove this also. It's also a concentration. Again, concent one has to concentrate, okay? It's not so pleasant always, this, uh, because one, one has, <laughs> if one is tired, one, one has to apply definitions, okay? What is the definition of this? What's the definition of this? And then apply, apply, no? And then it's always canonical. In any case, uh, uh, it's useful. Uh, so we have two closures. We have the closure of A in Y, and we have the closure of A in X. No? So it's better to give a name for the proof to, to the closure of A. We have a name for the closure of F. So let B be the closure of, of A in in Y. And we have to prove that B is equal to this, okay? So uh, uh, a claim is, of course, that B is n nothing else than A bar. So this is the same. And so we have two inclusions again, no? As usual, here we have uh, uh, these two inclusions. Maybe not. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> so A bar is closed in X 
by definition. That's the closure in the whole space. So the intersection, this means, of course, that A bar intersection Y. So I don't write then, uh, well, this, okay, we go. Oh, this means this, and so on, implies, implies, no? So A bar intersection Y uh, uh, is closed in Y. That's a preceding lemma, no? The lem preceding lemma. That's what you pre preceding lemma. Of course, A is contained in A bar. This is the largest, uh, the smallest closed set containing A. And it's also in Y. By the definition of closure, exactly. Of closure now in Y, okay? Because now we are in Y. So the closure of A is B in Y. B is contained in A bar intersection Y. Because this is closed, no? And B is intersection over all closed set with contain A, over all. Okay? So B is. Okay, so this is one inclusion. Which one? Well, this one. Okay. <laughs> this one. So we need the other one. Conversely, conversely, it's not so clear. Uh, for the other inclusion, no, that means conversely. B is closed in Y. That's a closure. B is closed in Y. So by the preceding lemma again, okay, the lemma before, Proceed is with one E or with two E's? I'm not completely sure now. With one, I suppose. In Italiano, in Italian, it's with one. Yeah, it should be one also here then, I suppose. <laughs> By the preceding lemma? Maybe not, I'm not sure. <laughs> huh? One is sufficient, it seems, no? By preceding lemma, so we have a closed set in Y, so what is that? Uh, uh, B is equal to, the closed sets in Y are C intersection Y, where C is closed in X. That's what we proved before, no? I'm writing too large, it seems. I should write somewhat smaller. So what uh, uh, B? So what we know is that uh, A is contained in C. This is clear. A, of course, is contained in B here. No, that's a closure. So A is contained in C. C is closed in X. This is closed in X, which I write again. This is closed in X. And this implies that A bar is contained in, in C again now, because this is closed in X. A bar is the smallest closed set. And then, finally, we have A bar intersection Y is contained in C intersection Y. And that was B. 
And that's it. That's the other inclusion. So they're equal. Okay. So one has to concentrate on notation. No? If one is tired, it's not so. But it, everything is canonical, okay? No ideas, but applying definitions, definitions, but we have to use the notation and we have to think all this. At, at what, which point are we, okay? So this is uh, this lemma. So now, uh, so I start again here. I mean, this definition uh, uh, is somewhat awkward, no, the, of the closure. The largest, the smallest closed set containing, the intersection over all closed sets, no. You don't want to find all closed sets containing and then take the intersection, no. So uh, uh, what we apply is uh, the following proposition. And that, uh, so A is a subspace, a subset of X. X is the usual topological space. And X is a point in X. X is in X. So I, then, the following. X is in the closure of A. So you want to decide if this point is in the closure of A, no? If and only if every open set containing X intersects A. So now I introduce some notation, which is very useful, okay? If and only if every, and now I write neighborhood. I call this neighborhood, but uh, uh, one has to see what is a neighborhood, okay? There are not one, there are two possibilities at least of this thing. Every neighborhood, it's a long word, but We will abbreviate later this. <laughs> Every neighborhood U of X. And what is a neighborhood? So I give a definition of neighborhood. That's an open set containing X. Open set. That's a neighborhood for us. An open set containing S. That's a definition. There's another possibility of neighborhood, uh, more general. It might be a set containing X, and X is in the interior. So X, there's an open set, which is con it contains X, as in contains the large, but maybe the larger is not open itself. Okay? But for us, neighborhood is open. Every neighborhood of X intersects What? A. What means intersects? Intersects means has non-empty intersection with X, no? Has non-empty. Intersection. Intersects A with A. So that's the shortest way to say. Every neighborhood of X intersects A. Then X is uh, in the closure. And the second part is uh, we can take uh, uh, the second part is if B is a basis, B a basis of X, uh, yes, X, of the topology of X, B a basis of X, then X in, X is in, uh, the closure of A, if and only if. Every B in B, which contains X, we don't have to check it for all neighborhoods. Every B in B, which contains X, intersects A, okay? So we have to check only for basis elements. 
intersects A. As usual, one can always restrict to basis element. That's useful because uh, uh, basis is easy to describe in general. We find a nice basis for topology. But the topology is not nice to describe in general. So it's good to work with the basis. So proof. I. And two I, I will not prove. I mean, I, it's, uh, one direction is, uh, follows from this anyway. If any neighborhood intersects, then every B in B which is open intersects. So one direction is, if we prove this, one direction here is trivial, and the other is very easy. Again, the property of the basis is, given open set, given a point, there's a basis element which contains the point, it's contained in the open set now. So you apply just this, and then it is the same as this. So I, if, let's suppose X is not in the closure of A. If X is not in the closure of A, then of course U, which is a complement X minus closure of A, this is open, no? And it contains X, because X is not here. So it's a neighborhood of X. It's a neighborhood of X. And now I abbreviate neighborhood. OK, because this is too long. One time, OK, but this is neighborhood. It's clear, no one can understand. It's a neighborhood of X. which does not intersect A, because it's X minus a larger set than A, okay? which does not intersect A. Since A is con contained in A bar, no? Since a is contained in. This is the smallest closed set which contains A. Okay? The smallest closed set which contains A. So uh, 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 this proves, what, what does it prove? This proves. Yes, <laughs> something. <laughs> so if X is not in the closure, then there is a neighborhood which does not intersect. So if every neighborhood, if X is not in the closure, then there is a neighborhood which does not intersect. If every neighborhood intersects, then X is in the closure. If every neighborhood intersects, then X is in the closure. So this proves this direction, okay? This proves this direction. All right. Well, you have to just, it's a language, no? Uh, 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 if X is not in the closure, then there is a neighborhood which does not intersect A. If every neighborhood intersects A, then X must be in the closure. So this is the story. Okay. And the other one, conversely, again. Well, I will not prove this, okay? That's a very easy exercise and cannot. So conversely, For the other inclusion, conversely means for the other, uh, uh, not inclusion, for the other implication, okay? Yeah. In inclusion, implication, whatever is the case. Conversely, let U be a neighborhood of X. Neighborhood of X, which does not intersect. Suppose there's a neighborhood U which does not intersect A. This means that X minus U, uh, U, X minus U is closed. Let U be a neighborhood of X. It, it, it does not contain X now, and X is not in. Uh, it's closed and it contains A. 
labeled a vector which does not intersect A, U does not intersect A. So A is contained in X minus U. Yes. And this means that the closure of A, so this is closed. And then A bar, because this is the smallest closed set, A bar, no? It's contained in X minus U. But U is the neighborhood of X. So X is not here. It's not here. So X is not in. It's not here, so it's not here. It's not in A bar. So if X is in A bar, then every neighborhood intersects. So this is the other direction, okay? This proves this direction. So we have both. Yes. And now we can distinguish between two types of points in the closure. So this is a definition. Important for us, definition. So a subset of X, again, the same, the same situation as before. So X in X, we have a point X, cap, a small X in capital X. So X is the limit point of A. So we want to define limit point. A is the limit point of A. If every neighborhood of X neighborhood again of X Maybe u of x, it's not important for the definition, but neighborhood u of x intersects A. That would be boundary in the boundary, no? That's the proposition. So these are exactly the, the points in the, uh, sorry, in the boundary, in the closure of A, okay? These are the points in the closure. And now I add for limit point, intersects A in the point. Uh, in a point different from X, in another point. Well, it's not clear why this is called limit point here, okay? That doesn't look, so we have this neighborhood, and it have, has to intersect A, but not in the same, uh, maybe in X also, okay? But that's not sufficient. We need another, one other point, no, in A. And that uh, uh, doesn't look like a limit, okay? So we have to comment on this a little bit. Uh, but it's called limit point. That's the definition of limit point. And so there's a lemma then. Lemma that the closure of A is A and union A prime. So this is not a standard definition, but sometimes, okay. We will not, we use it only here. So A prime are all limit points of A.
So this is the, 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 the closure is A itself. A is contained in A closure. And you add all limit points. The proof is easy. So two inclusions again, no? This and this, as usual. So A is contained in A bar, by definition. The, the what? Yeah, yeah the, the smallest closed set containing A, containing A, yeah. And A prime is contained in A bar by the proposition, OK? So this is by the proposition. Intersects every, uh, uh, every neighborhood of x intersects this A, OK? In a point different, but in the closures anyway. So this implies then that A bar, what do you want? A union A prime certainly is contained in, in the closure. That's clear, OK. And we have to prove the other inclusion. Conversely, again, conversely, for the other inclusion, suppose, well, the other inclusion, which one is that? That's uh, A bar is contained in this one. A bar is contained here. So let X be in A bar. X, and let's add X is not in A. Suppose X is in A bar, but not in A. Then we have to prove it's in A prime, of course, OK? Same proposition, no? So this means then every neighborhood of A, of X, intersects A. That's a proposition, no? By the proposition. In a point different from A, X, because X is not in A, OK? In a point different from X, since X is not in A. So then is X is a limit point. So X is in A prime. So X is in a prime. Sorry. X is in the limit point, so it's an A prime. And that proves the other direction, OK? Since it's, uh, since it's, it's not in A. Thanks. Yes. Since x is not in A, x must, uh, so then x is in A prime. So this implies, uh, so this implies then that uh, A bar is contained in A union A prime. If it's not here, it's here. What? If it's not here, a point here. If it's here, it's good. If it's not here, it's here. Sorry? Yes. 
No, 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 no. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, so you are asking if. Uh, If uh, points of A can be limit points, okay? So for, uh, uh, for example, Q, the closure, so Q is in R, no? Okay. Uh, the closure of Q is Ry. So, Every point is in the closure of R, no? So given a point, given a neighborhood, this neighborhood contains an interval. This is a basis. And each interval contains rationals. Okay? Since each interval contains rationals. In each open interval, we have a Interval is, in general, if you don't say open interval, well, I should say, since each open interval contains rationals, okay? What, is, what are uh, uh, the limit points of Q? That's also R, no? So each point in Q is the limit point of Q because each interval contains this point, but it contains other rationals, okay? Not just one rational, no? So uh, uh, also the limit points of Q, every, okay? So A intersection A prime is not in general uh, uh, disjoint or something, okay? The points of A can be limit points itself, okay? This is not a disjoint union. I don't know, was that the question more or less or not more or less? <laughs> so you can ask again. No. Take the integers now. Then the closure is this, and the limit points. Yes. It's empty set. These are all isolated points, okay? Yeah. Okay. So this was the example. Oops. I will give a nice example. Well, as an exercise, maybe. The ordered square, no? And you have certain subsets, and you want the closure, to find the closure. And that's very surprising, because it's a strange topology. So, but I will not do it now. And tomorrow, we'll... we'll I'll give you some exercises. Of course, why is it called limit point? That's not so clear here, no. One other point, limit seems limit. There's some limit, okay? Limit means con some kind of convergence in general, no? Limit point. But here you have one other point only, okay? Which is very weak, no? So there's a condition which is, uh, we, this is Hausdorff. That's the first a condition for a topological space. So a topological space X is Hausdorff. So that's a property. That's a name and that's a, okay. X is Hausdorff. It's a Hausdorff space. It's a Hausdorff space. What is Hausdorff? That's an adje adjective and, and it's a Hausdorff space. And maybe that's a, but I'm trying to, is a Hausdorff space, okay? So what? If any, every two points, x distinct points, x, y in x, have disjoint neighborhoods. So that's a, if every 
two distinct points x distinct from y in x have disjoint manifolds. Neighborhoods, now this is now neighborhoods, NBHDS, okay? So the picture is this. We have two disjoint points, x, y, and then we have disjoint neighborhoods. So these are disjoint neighborhoods. Okay, that's Hausdorff. So why introduce Hausdorff at this point? Because then uh, we have a uh, 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 lemma or proposition proposition. I come back to limit points, okay, in three minutes. But here's a proposition. So uh, what is the impression of, uh, of uh, the standard topology R, okay, R2 in analysis? Now, points are closed, right? Points are closed, no? I mean, points can be open if you have the discrete topology or some strange topology. If there's a standard topology on the reals or on R2 or on Rn, then points are closed. Finite sets are closed, no? Finite unions of closed sets, no? And this is uh, uh, the uh, property of Hausdorff spaces. So if X is a Hausdorff space, so every finite set, every finite set every point, in particular every point In a house of space, so in particular, every point in particular, sorry, every point in a house of space is closed. Proof. It suffices to pr uh, prove that every point is closed, no? It suffices but because finite unions of closed sets are closed, no? Finite unions of closed sets are closed, not arbitrary. It suffices to prove that every point, every point is closed. Well, every one point set is closed. Every one point set, singleton, yes, x, this is small x, is closed. x and x, of course, okay? So this is a property here, Hausdorff space. Uh, it suffices to prove that every one point set X is closed, X and X. So what does it mean? That means uh, uh, the closure of this is again this, no? The closure of this is this again, no? If you take the closure here, we remain in this set, okay? So take any other point. So let Y be in x, y different from x. So these are our points, no, x, and we have a different point, y, okay? So we're getting tired. Uh, so, uh, 
We want to prove that y is not in the closure, okay? That is, we have to find a neighborhood of y which does not intersect x. So we have to find a neighborhood here which does not intersect x. So x is Hausdorff, okay? So this implies that y has a neighborhood u. So this is u. Well, my, maybe not u. Let, let, don't give a name. u, v, two neighborhoods. y has a neighborhood which does not x. Well, they have, they have two neighborhoods which are disjoint even, okay? So it says a neighborhood which does not contain x. Because we have disjoint neighborhoods, no? We have here, we have our second neighborhood if we want, okay? Well, we don't care too much about the second one. Why has a neighborhood which does not contain x? So this implies uh, 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 that y is not in the closure, okay? So y is not in the closure of x. But that means the closure of x, there's no other point. So the closure of x is x. And so x is closed. So x and x. This is closed, no? The closure is closed. X is closed. So that's the proof. But you see, we don't need the full strength, okay? Of, of, so there's another. Uh, 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 so that's nice to, re, to uh, remember. So I will. Well, this is not correct, okay? We have three minutes, right? I, I have three minutes here on my clock. Two, two and a half. This is okay. This, uh, this is, <laughs> I checked. <laughs> so this is a right. I don't know why they have this. So what? Uh, so we have. Uh, uh, this is a Hausdorff, no? Every two different points have to show a neighbor. So this is Hausdorff, and this is also T two. This is called T two sometimes, no? And we don't need T two. What we need is, having given two points, each one has a neighborhood which doesn't contain the other. So the picture is this now, okay? We have disjoint, uh, we have neighborhoods. Each one, each point has a neighborhood which doesn't contain the other. But maybe they are not disjoint. That's T1, That's T1 here. Yeah. Okay. So these are separation axioms. We will see uh, much later more. But these are uh, the separation axioms. Separation axioms. And the nice thing is then, T2 is important, okay? House of house of, we will see and see. T1, we will not see. Because uh, uh, it's just, well, it's also important sometimes. But uh, so uh, uh, we have a lemma, a proposition, if you want. That's an exercise. That's, so uh, uh, X is T1, okay? It uh, satisfies this separation axioms if and only if points are closed. That's equivalent to the fact that points are closed. That's exactly T1. T2, yeah, it would be enough to have T1 for points are closed. So proof, proof. So one. Uh, uh, 
this we proved already, no? As before, right? Well, we use only T1 in the proof before. We use that Y as a neighborhood which does not contain X, right? In the proof before. So T1 is sufficient. We don't need T2. We, we just have T1, right? And the other direction is an exercise. Well, this is trivial. This is trivial. So uh, what we have to prove is T1. Points are closed. So let, given two points again, x, y, distinct points, no? x different from y. So we have to find a neighborhood of y which doesn't contain x. But points are closed. So y minus x. Because this is closed. Points are closed. So u minus a point is a neighborhood of y. So this is open. This is a neighborhood of y. What do we want to prove? Which does not contain x, of course. Which does not contain x. So this means it's t1, OK? So this implies x is t1. Right? It's symmetric in x and y here, obviously, OK? So y has a neighborhood which doesn't contain x, and uh, this is symmetric completely. So x has a neighborhood which doesn't contain y, OK? It's symmetric. This condition is symmetric in uh, x and y. So uh, uh, t1 is just points are close, OK? Of course, now uh, uh, the general game, so I finish. Yeah, <laughs> two minutes over. Sorry? So this is, X points are closed now. And so this is open. The complement of closed is open. Ah, what is U? Yes, thank you. There's no U, no. <laughs> Capital X, yes. Yes, yes, of course. You're right. No U. So we take X, the whole space, no? X, minus, X is closed. X minus X is open. So this is neighborhood of X, uh, of Y, of the other point, which, yes, thanks. So tomorrow I will ask you an example. So this game in, in, in point set topology now is, well, maybe it's the same T1 and T2, no? If it would be the same, it would not be called T1 and T2. So they are different, no? So then we have an example. We, we want to see an example which is T1 but not T2. It's not the same condition, no? So you can guess what this example. We, we know an example already, which is T1 and not T2. This is a... Finite complement topology here. Yeah. Something has to come being known and finite complement. The same. The finite sort of down complement. Finite complement topology of an infinite set. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's uh, so maybe tomorrow we have we, we start with this and just so it's easy to recall T one now because its points are closed and T two is a little bit stronger. But in many cases T one is sufficient. Okay. In almost all applications, it's T1. It's, it's, I don't know. I don't remember in this moment a single situation where you need T2 and T1 is not sufficient. The uniqueness of way of proof of the sequence. Let's see, let's see. So 
So here is a sequence which converges to this point, and you say it converges maybe also to this point, okay? But So uh, T1 means, uh, if you have these joint neighborhoods, okay, it's, it's clear. This sequence has to decide where to go, OK? If you have this, side of uh, this type of neighborhoods, we have, we have some problem, yeah, right. Don't form one, the space yes. Space yeah. It might be in the intersection always, okay? Yeah, that's a good remark, okay? So we have, uh, 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 for the uniqueness of limit, yeah, that's a, by, uh, we sh uh, should, uh, should have talked about that anyway, no? Uh, in, in, in Hausdorff spaces, if you have a convergent sequence, then the limit is unique. That's an important property of Hausdorff spaces, okay? And as you say, here it seems that T1 is not sufficient, maybe, OK? Yeah. Exactly. So that's the situation, OK? Where you want Hausdorff, T2, and not T1. Well, we discuss more tomorrow, uh, uh, two minutes, uh, uh, if we have an example, OK? Yes. So for today, five minutes <laughs> over, OK. <laughs>